should be warming up. Walter, go get your chopper. We're about to go live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. I'm Hank Strange. We've got Walter Keller here. We might get uh, another guest or two jumping on with us. Today, we're going to talk about AKs a little bit. We'll have that AK conversation. Yep. You know, we're planning on um, doing some, well, at least one AK video, right, Walter? Yes, we are. It'll probably, it might end up being more than one. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah cuz there's there's probably a lot of things to go over. So, we wanted to take this opportunity to just talk with you guys, find out what kind of stuff you want to know. Obviously, this I think the AK is probably the most popular rifle in the world, right? Yeah, well, if it isn't it's damn close. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the the rest of the world anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably in the rest of the world, but it's pretty popular here in America. I mean, even if it's yeah. not your go-to rifle, Pretty much every gun guy out there either has an AK or had an AK at some point. Right, right, right. So, or you know, or likes to talk bad about it. One or the other. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. So that's always that's a sport. Yeah, you know, you know it takes a lot of skills. It's a Chevy Ford thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't know because apparently I'm now officially like a Mopar guy. You were you were the king of the Mopars. That's what I'm apparently, <laughs> apparently now I'm a Mopar guy, not deliberately, but totally accidentally. I'm I mean, a actually, you're a multinational truck guy. Actually, yeah, yeah. I don't discriminate, man. I, when it comes to the ladies, and the cars, and the guns, I don't discriminate. And dark gray colored vehicles. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. You know, I think that AK is like a hot button subject. Um, I think on my channel. Probably the biggest video or the second biggest video is an AK video. Yeah, um, I mean, um, I I definitely have a thing for him. I I there's before the AR-15 was such a um, with so many different parts and pieces and forearms and stuff. The AK was kind of like that. You had different countries, different versions, different stocks. So right, you know. yeah. So it, I think it's good. We can have this conversation. We could probably do it a couple times. I know there's people suggesting we have certain people come on. We have had some people. You know, we're always trying to schedule people. So maybe we'll get someone. Someone suggesting we get AK Operators Union, who is a cool dude. I like I like the AK Operator Union dude. dude. Yeah. So uh, we could probably, you know, we got to reach out <laughs> and get him to come on. So let us know out there. What kind of stuff do you want to know? What do you want us to talk about? What would so you like? We, what would you yeah. like to see built? You know, yeah. what do you what do you like the accessories you like to see on an AK? Yeah. yeah, exactly. We're just trying to think tank future videos. Just in case you're wondering, we are doing regular gun videos. <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, Walter and I have one with the firepower rig from um, Andrew's Custom Leather. Yeah. So that that should be that should be coming out as soon as I can edit it. <laughs> <laughs> Along faster, with everything. faster, faster. Yeah, I know. So, um, and then you're working, you've got an AK project that you're probably going to work on, or two. You probably have a couple of things that you're working on, right, Walter? Yeah, sorry about eating cheese in front of you here, but yeah. Um, no, that's, that's okay. Yeah. No, Show I want to guns and we'll be all right. <laughs> I want to build a uh, kind of a fiber, fiber crank kind of thing where parts from all over the world from AKs. That's a nice stock. Hey, let's hold that up again. Let's see that. What, what? Oh, that looks good. Chinese. This is actually, the Chinese use this stock on AKs, but this one actually came off an air rifle. Oh, is that Chinese. that uh, plastic, uh, what's that thing called? Um, um, well, some people say Flonic or Phonic or, or mm -hmm. Bakelite. Ba yeah, is it Bakelite? Uh, it's, more, it's more of a plastic, a plastic plastic than Bakelite, I think. Oh, okay. Tra traditional Bakelite anyways, but it folds. It's a folder. It's got a hinge. Oh, okay. So. The idea is to kind of put something together using parts from all over the world and kind of have a Kyber Pass look about it, for those who are familiar with that. Um, not really. Yeah. I'm not. So what, what's the Kyber Pass look? Over in Afghanistan, the Pakistan, over in that area, they build mm -hmm. AKs from scratch, and then they build them from parts and pieces, and and they they, they just have a real unique look. Uh, sometimes they, they have Chinese traits. Sometimes they have Russian traits. Um, it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that all thrown together so um that's what i'm kind of got you know in the works you know rpk style stocks um chinese barrels chinese parts throw them all together and make one gun that just different you know oh okay 
So, um, yeah, that sounds interesting. So you're saying Kyber Pass is kind of like a, something from the stands. Yeah, from the stands, yep. yep. Oh, okay. And, and it's kind of like a Franken, a Frankenstein. Frank, Franken, fr Franken. <laughs> Yeah, Frank. I was gonna say Frankenstein, but it's not gonna do with a Sten. But uh, no, it's not a Sten, but a Frankenstein no, no. AK. Yep, yep, yep. Correct. Okay, so let me see if I've got anything. I know some. Um, Kevin Dufresne is saying Return of the Five Four Five. Yeah, that's that's my favorite. Uh, are you seeing uh, Five Four Five ammo come in? Um, I know you're always looking at the ammo prices. The ammo's the thing, right? Oh, yeah. I was. Looking, I just bought some. Um, I bought some fifty cal ammo today. And prices aren't bad at all right now. And ammo in general is down. So, you mm -hmm. know, but 545 by 39, um, as far as like imported ammo, there's not as much as there used to be. So mm -hmm. you're kind of stuck in the middle there. Right. So, okay. So we're going to go over some of the questions. They are coming in. I'm going to hit this one up. This is probably like the last question that went in there, but we're going to get the other stuff. Boss Hog wants to know, or he says, I'm in the market for an AK. Um, an AK pistol, which company do you suggest he go with? Oh, that's a tough one. So what was that you were just throwing up? Go ahead, throw that this up. This is um, front end off of a Chinese, I believe it was a Mac 90, um, but I think it was a gun that was that had the um, the bad features and they cut it off. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it's Chinese. So I want to oh, okay. probably use part of this on my build. Okay, looks like we got El Tenda. Yay! Vianejo. What's happening? Just for a little bit, like yeah. I just know. Yeah, we figured we were talking AKs. I know you like AKs. <laughs> Anyone else out there that wants to talk AKs with us and wants to jump on, you're gonna have to PM me or Lola if you have info to do that, and we'll, you know, you can jump on with us. We can talk AKs. So, um, okay. So the question from Boss Hog was. Um, you know, what company should he go with to get an AK? He wants an AK, and I think an AK pistol. What company do you think, you know, good direction for him hmm. to go? Hmm. Well, let's see. Here. I mean, you know. Pistol, pistol, there's not a lot of choices, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't try the new century arm. I have an yeah. M92 PEP. Yeah. Which, okay. Now, which I have to, to tweak a little bit. Um, if I had the money, I'd probably go, what is the uh, Arsenal? Sam 7, I think it's Yeah. Called. Yeah. I almost bought an Arsenal. At one point, but then um, I just I bailed out. I couldn't spend a thousand bucks on it. I couldn't pull a trigger. Yeah. Uh, no yeah. comment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, um, like uh, El Tenda is saying, I think Century Arms has um, a couple of different RAS 47s pistols. There's right. a few. There's a few of them. Yeah, I have a, I have a Drake a Draco or Draco as I call it. Draco. Um, yeah. Um, Rapper, rappers envy that now. I don't know if you do. Yeah. I, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, if you have a yeah. Yeah. Yeah, member, pretty much, but you know. <laughs> no. You're All what? You're a, oh, a gang member? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone has a Draco now. Walter, what gang are you in? Like the Southside <laughs> Crips? <laughs> <laughs> I, live, I, live on, I live on this, you know, on a South Road, so I guess I, I am yeah. with the like, South Side. Yeah. Yeah. Like, old dudes better recognize. <laughs> That's that, Mopo, I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, but there. Is, I think there's a rapper. I think his name is Draco, or he raps about uh -huh. Draco or whatever. Okay. So I noticed in gun stores, like for for example, Big Daddy Guns, which sometimes does have the Dracos, whatever, however you want to call it. Draco, yeah. Yeah. Um, dudes come in there, man, looking for those things and just buy them. I don't doubt yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. They went up. Well, I think the 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 pep went up to seven hundred dollars right now, Ooh. which is crazy. I mean, it used to be. I think I paid my, overpaid mine over. Paid mine. A Cabela was like five fifty. You don't even know what I, you don't even want to know what I paid for mine. I, I bought it when no things way. were really slow. I think I paid three something for it. Oh yeah. well, so, those days yeah. those days are over. <laughs> well, for the time yeah. being, yeah. Eh, I don't I don't know. Well, do you remember when AKs were seventy five bucks? They were never. Did. They were never seventy five dollars. That's a that is a that is a fallacy. <laughs> SKS really? is seventy five dollars. Yeah, probably. Oh, okay. That, the cheapest. The cheapest. Mac ninety I ever bought I think was like one seventy five one fifty, and that was when you bought yeah. like you bought ten at one time. Um, Correct. Yeah. But never seventy five dollars. Never. I think my first Mosin was like oh. eighty five dollars. Oh really? Okay. Uh, maybe I mean, so. Not even wholesale. It wasn't seventy five bucks. No, no. Maybe if you bought a hundred of them. 
No. But the average, <laughs> the average guy wasn't buying 100 AKs, so. Oh, okay. Because I have like a real, like a friend of mine who's like an old school <laughs> gun guy, and he's like, I remember when AKs oh, were like 75 bucks. I bet. <laughs> I bought my first one like an 80. Um, I got my first one like an 80. Uh, it was around the Challenger when the Challenger crashed or exploded. 86, something like that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. And that, 85, that was, 86. Yeah, that was a, uh, a Type 56 Norinco and or Polytech Type 56. And it was like 350 at the time. Nice. So, wow. You know, which is probably three grand right now, but you know. No, yeah. <laughs> it depends. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Two. So, but, so, so, yeah. like, what's the what's the options for Boss Hog there? You think? Uh, I know that we made like a pistol on SBI. I know I, that he wants both. I, I think he's just looking for a rifle, and then he's also looking for a pistol. There are rumors that rumors that I don't know, one hundred percent sure that um, Crab is coming out with another S neck, which is now an SBR technically. But there were rumor about an AK pistol too, because they were making already one. I think it was called Cerberus. I think. Was that, I, 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 in one of my video, old video, there is Mark talking about it, Mark and Tom talking about it, about the, and I think that was, you know, based on a SAM. Okay. okay. SAM. Mm -hmm. With all the benefits, you know, that you get from, like we discussed in the other show. I mean, you know, yeah. again, it's not, it's not like they don't slap a stock and, they don't, you know, they do a bunch of stuff on it. So, yeah. I mean, if you want something high end, there are some options. Um, I don't know. I don't. The weight, obviously, with rifle dynamics hasn't come down yet. But it's. But supposedly, you're gonna be able to see rifle dynamics. Just uh, you can walk into a store and see them. In mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming yeah. it's gonna be the end of the year, early next year. Yeah. But those and, and those are gonna be high end. And I'm not bashing. You know, I like we discussed in the other video. I'm not bashing anything if I don't try it. So maybe you know, maybe the century again might be okay. I I I know somebody that works for them, and I asked, hey. Yeah. If you want to send me one for a test, yeah. I'm I think, right. I think maybe the better thing to do is to like say, like, what brand should we stay away from? You know. I, well, I am, that, oh. <laughs> go, yeah, El Tendo, go ahead. You, you got some brands you would stay away from? India, Oklahoma. <laughs> you mean I O? <laughs> yeah. <Is your> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll, you know, go ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. No, yes. no, no, go ahead. Have you had um, some bad experiences with into ordinance, or are you just basing uh, that on, I, like, you know? Okay, you'll go. The guy we mentioned in the past show called Ziki Shots mm -hmm. is a really, really, really uh, knowledgeable guy. And like we discussed before, he does 3,000, 5,000 tests, but not like somebody else. Mm hmm measure everything after testing it and what I mean by that is is there any deformation on the ball carrier if rivets are moving which can happen unfortunately and um, and he did a video on that brand and the rifle ended up being pretty bad off specs like right. off bad bad yeah. really bad so I mean no no bashing again anybody I didn't never shot one and I know yeah. people that have that they say they work fine so the problem might be the same problem I had most century uh, 74 than I bought from Century Arm, probably years ago, five years ago. Okay, yeah. I'm not saying everything they make was bad, but mine, the barrel was a Tantal barrel for a 556 Tantal, not a 545 rifle. So, that being said, the gun was actually nice looking, but the barrel was completely wrong, oh. right? So, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And again, that doesn't mean that now they're not making good guns because right. it's five right. years later. I'm assuming they start, you know, they start, and they try to st step up, you know what I mean? But, you know, but yeah. Walter, you have any like uh, companies that you've come across with that you've had bad experiences with? or? Um, well, I've had a couple of uh, inner ordinance ones. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so there you go. That's but that, that was back in 2009 time. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's a long story, but it just kept getting worse and worse as I returned things, and they sent things back to me. And, um, and I, in the end, I ended up with two rifles when I should have only had one, and they didn't even realize it. Um, yeah. I, I think, <laughs> like, into ordinance, I've had a little bit of experience with them, but not really enough. We haven't torture tested anything. Yeah, I, lately, you I know. haven't seen anything. Um, well, they, they've, they're in Florida nowadays. I just think they're not super organized and or mm -hmm. very focused, you know. Um, 
which is unfortunate because they, they, they've had opportunities to turn the company around, but right, right. they still haven't been able to get over that reputation. So, Well, Cent Century had the same thing for a long time. Mm -hmm. but it, it was hit and miss when you got something from Century. Sometimes it was fine, and other times it was a piece of junk. Um, but they've kind of got their act together a little bit more now, it seems. Yeah. And, you know, I have this is a, this is their first gen um, C39. And I mean, I haven't torture tested it, but I have shot it repeatedly and it seems to work fine and stay together. And, you know, is that uh, um, milled, right? Yes, correct. correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, that's why I don't, that's why I don't I don't I don't sorry, I don't. I don't bash them because I, I mean, I honestly, I mean, they look nice for from outside. I mean, again, it depends what you're, what you're expecting. You know, I, right. if I want something that's indestructible, I won't buy it. Well, yeah. so here's one of the problems with guns that we should always, specifically rifles, I think, um, or rifles more so than handguns. Um, it depends on how much ammo you're going to put through something, right? So there's guys who buy these guns and they train with them. They go do a lot of shooting. They're very serious shooters. They put a lot of rounds through guns. But that's a very small percentage of the guys that are actually buying these rifles. Most most people that buy these rifles, I don't know, in the, li in the time that they own it, they maybe put somewhere maybe 50, maybe 100 rounds at the most. Um, okay. Typically, they never go over a thousand rounds. So some of these guns, you're really not going to see problems until you go into the thousands of rounds, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I have a friend that I think is another YouTuber, Mule Team Sixty Six. He has one of the. Sorry, my dog is down here. Uh, <clears throat> one of the old Century. What do you want? Uh, one of the old Century arm. And. Um, and uh, it should I think like three or five thousand rounds. I mean, it seems like working fine, you know? I mean, again, it's a matter of luck. If you want to put like that, which is an unfortunate thing for a company, you should have like quality control. But then again, there's a, there's a bunch of factors that can involve, you know, the lack of a gun. You know, I have a six, I, well, I, I don't know if I still have. For now, I still have a, I have, I own, sorry, a six hour P320C. I send it back to six hour because uh, I was going out of battery um a problem that actually a bunch of people have is when in order to take down the gun you have to rotate the guide rod straight or down enough in order to move the takedown level and everybody everybody will say no it's one thing you can fix with your hands and everything like no it's a 600 dollar gun mm -hmm. it's a freaking sick power yeah gun. yeah you shouldn't have to mm -hmm. you know it's, it's bullshit you know and then they're bashing the same time they're bashing bashing sorry the canic uh, elite because the guide rod wasn't it well, the problem with the guy that we discussed maybe in the other video mm -hmm. wasn't the gun wasn't ejecting far enough because the guy draw well, guy draw sorry was for a 115 gun uh for a 115 grain gun when actually the original one was designed for the you know for the nato ammo which has 124. i mean it's a ten dollar part but it's not like the gun was malfunctioning mine worked fine i mean it wasn't like a major malfunction compared to the sig that's a big problem when your gun doesn't go back when your gun, sorry, goes out of battery, that's a big problem. Yeah, you know. I mean, I think regardless of how much you pay for it, it should be good. <laughs> you right, know, right. I mean, you know, I, 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 we discussed about the Glocks right last time, and I said why I don't like them. I mean, it's just a matter of aesthetic. Other than that, I would put my life on one because they're immortal, pretty much. But you know, and then um, military arm China did a review. I think he shot he shot like one thousand round with a C. Uh, yeah, I think he went over a thousand. Yeah, with the with yeah. the three twenty. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. and the gun was pretty much melting almost. There was a little uh, deformation. Again, 1,000 round, as for a gun, if you want to be fair, you know, I don't see anybody's going to shoot 1,000 round in a row with a rifle. And it, was still it was still functional, though. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Aesthetic thing. Yeah. I understand a rifle. I have a friend that M4, when they were deployed, they were shooting so much, and then their M4 barrel turned white, you know, <laughs> it's because they were shooting so much. Yeah. Well, you know, well, that's again, the depending what you that's the thing. Like it really depend. It, it really depends. I think on how much you're going to use it. But regardless of that, look. Even if you don't shoot a lot, no one wants to buy a gun, and then no one wants to pay a lot of money. You know, I, you're not going to find a lot of AKs for less than five, six hundred bucks out there. So no one wants to pay. Uh, you know, all that money for this thing, and it's like, oh well. It, it, you know, it can't do 5,000 rounds, even though they're not going to do it. They still want it to be able to do that just in case the apocalypse or whatever. Yeah, whatever excuse. Yeah, yeah whatever comes at them. And I think that's a reasonable expectation, right? 
Um, yeah, yeah. Well, unless you got a major problem like a canted front side, you know, something like that. that you know, at that point, it's a little bit, you know, like, yeah, it's a little bit, you know, yeah. Well, wrong, wrong barrel, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit you know? Or, or uh, I, the, one of the I/O guns I had, the receiver was mounted crooked in on the trunnion. So you look oh, down shit. and it was like it went sideways, and I'm like, holy shit, look at that! And yeah. it's like, no, I know. Yeah, so. that's the reputation they have. Okay, I think one of the other questions um, someone had is, uh, how do you tell um, tell the different variants apart, Walter? Oh well, you know, uh, sheet metal receivers, milled receivers are the primary things. I mean, and different weight of or thicknesses of sheet metal receivers. Um, yeah, um, that's a, my way of telling things. I mean, for your basic guns, you know, you can get into all of then all little fine details and pieces and parts. But yeah, it gets complicated with AKs because so many different yeah. people make so many different variants of AKs, right? Right, right. Yeah, there are a I lot mean, out nowadays, there. Nowadays, yes. Back in time, the nineties, eighties, when the gun were was well, put in this way, when you were training the army and the gun was actually issued gun was easier to distinguish them because yeah you got hungarian amd you got yugo aks with the three holes instead of two on the end you know or they you know polish one with the you know that point was easy nowadays they look so similar I really tell the difference you know it's, it's yeah. like m you know, i like m4 you know you can buy a whatever push master m4 and then pimp it with whatever you want it's not even an m4 anymore you know it's so so you know I mean, I, I in my M92 pep, my Wozer, I paid them probably 400 bucks back in time, 500. Right now, if I sell them, I'm losing money because I put so much crap on those rifles. <laughs> <laughs> you got to take it off. I mean, well, <laughs> sell it <yeah>. separately. <laughs> yeah, you saw the video about it. I did a video called AK porn on my, on my, it's nothing actually like porn, it's a gun porn, of course. Oh, on my bad, YouTube, man. I mean, it'd be nice to have AKs and some porn involved. <laughs> you gotta pay for it. That's not free. It's like another channel. That's a pay for paper. Oh, okay. But, it, but you know, and there is a video, and I and I show all my uh, possible all, all my all my AKs. You know, and, and you get to the point. I'm I'm gonna put most of mine as far front part, and we discuss maybe in another video. But the front part goes. I'm pretty picky about mine. I always use Ultimax and TDI lower end guards. There is debatable what you want to use and when you want to use. And then if you have a stock adapter, I told you my two choices was the Crab Custom and, and, and of course, the Rifle Dynamics one. Pistol Grip, I like OG. It's old school. Can't go wrong with that. You know, it's nice and thick, you know. But, there are, you know, many choices, you know. And then again, you, unless you want to start charging, sorry, cha changing springs, you know, and whatever else, you know. There's plenty of stuff you can do in AK sites. I mean, it's all stuff you can do by yourself, honestly, you know, like an AR. I mean, mostly, you know. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, aftermarket stuff out there, most of it. I mean, I've seen guys, I think Babyface built up, he built up an AK from, from the ground, mm -hmm. uh, bending it up and everything. Walter, so you want to tell us, Walter, how you got into, like, tell us the story of you and AKs, man. Was that, like, your first rifles or? No, no, I my, my first, like, well, Military, I won't use the word assault rifle. The first that, that was an HK91, so I went right for the gusto to start mm -hmm. with. So, um, but then you know, I wanted an AK because they were everywhere. You see them on the news, you see them on the, you know, so, yeah. Soldier, yeah. Soldier of Fortune, my favorite magazine back yeah. then, you know. So, and and I at first I wanted a, a Hungarian one actually because, um, they're really decent made and they were different, but mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the importer of the Hungarian one stopped importing them. And um, I didn't end up with a Hungarian model. I ended up with a, that Chinese Type 56 with the folding bayonet and all that stuff. So um, nice. this is a Hungarian folder, a pre-band one um, that I did some horse trading for, believe it or not. I traded some of my stuff I make to this guy at Knob Creek, of course. And um, <laughs> like always. Is that a good place to go to? You, are there a lot of... That's where you can get a lot of uh, do a lot of AK trading, get parts and things like that. Yeah, there's a lot of parts and pieces, and um, it varies. Depends what walks through the show. Um, this guy walked up to the table. He had a an, an early AR-15 Colt and this, and wanted one of my 50 cal's, and just wanted to swap even. And I'm like, sure. Okay. <laughs> and, cool. and, and, and I and I did it, and I got my finally got my Hungarian folder. So. 
Nice. Um, yeah, I like a I like a um a, an under folder. Yeah, and it's, it's I, not, I, I, I'm, some people say it's not practical, but I like it. I don't know it's, why. It's the most yes. uncomfortable stock in the world, just about. Yeah. But, but it looks cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. And for yeah. and for, and it, and it's compact, you know, and it's simple and it works. So mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, for them, for them model, there is a company that make, I don't recall the name, they make a pad that you can actually install on the under folder stock. And when you fold it, and it actually helps with the cheek. Oh, what you can do is paracord it and, you know, make it a little yeah. bit more comfortable. Yeah, yeah a lot of people paracord it. And there's all different variations of folding stocks. There's oh, yeah. sheet metal ones, there's machine ones. There's, you know, if you start collecting AK stuff and you like vintage stuff, you, you can go on and on and on and on and oh, on. Yeah. And, you know, little yeah. variants and changes and. So now, um, Chris B says that he has a friend that has a Norinco NHM 91 for sale. Oh yeah. That's the, long, that's a long barrel. I think like a, kind of like an RPK style. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. You mean it has like a fixed stock? Well, it has, it has, a, has a longer barrel in the front. Um, those, I think those MH, those, that one he's talking about had thumb hole stocks, if I'm not mistaken. But a lot of those Chinese thumbhole stocks went away a long time ago. So, so is that good? I don't know. He didn't say how much his friend wants for it, but you know. Yeah, I, I, I I'm not in the market right now. I mean, mm -hmm. in, unless it's like a smoking. A smoking well, no, yeah, yeah, because Norinkos would would be. Yeah, I mean, I don't, high value, I don't, right? Only way I'm going to pay a lot for a Norinko is if it's original. You know, okay. if, somebody, if somebody's messing with it and put all kinds mm -hmm. of goofy stuff on it, I ain't buying it. Yeah, what's the other brand? Polytech, I think it's called Polytech. The other Chinese one, Polytech, I think it's called. Oh, Polytech, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 And there was one. I found one when I when I was, you know, like on my back in 2011. And then I got fresh with my new Floyd car. I went to the gun show in um, Palatine, Illinois. No, sorry, it's Champagne, Illinois. Champagne. Yeah. And there was a guy that had uh, a Norinco RPK with a drum mag and a pouch, two drum mag. Two, two, sorry, two drum mag, a pouch for six hundred dollars. Mm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that thing nowadays probably twice, if not. And you let times. that walk? You let that walk, El <laughs> like 15, 15 hour a week of work. Yeah, no, no, yeah it was a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you know, you could always sell an arm, leg. The, you know. the, the, the two drum mags were Chinese, and they were old ones. They're almost yeah. worth that. So yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So I'll tell you, what's your what's your AK story, man? What's your first AK? Uh the first one was a fixer stock. I think it was a 1063 Warzard, which I bought in 2011. Again, I swear I got my Foid card. One and uh, and uh, um, uh, Mosinagan together. I think I paid total 500 and overpaid because it was a little mom and pop shop. Mm -hmm. 500 and something. Okay. So wow. I had, it's gorgeous. I restain it, uh, you know, refinish it. Actually, it's a really nice gun. And the was you know, it's a was you know. And I, and I start putting, you know, the donkey, what they call it, the donkey thing, uh, vertical grip in the front. Then I start okay. swapping yeah. part. And I swapping part. And I mean, it's not an horrible gun. I had actually my, no, actually, to be fair, my first AK, sorry, was actually, in, in, uh, beg your pardon, actually, because I sold it. Was an imported uh, PEP single stack with a oh, thumb stop. Yeah. Okay. Actually, which is weird. No flesh either. Yeah, removable. No buying a lug, of course. Single stack, which you could modify eventually. The magazine was like 40 bucks a pop. Uh, actually, a really nice gun. I was impressed. The ejection of the, 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 the empty casings was actually like ridiculous. Like, I'm talking about four or five feet away. Yeah. And. Um, surplus ammo like M67, uh, the Yugoslavia one, and some other Tula stuff. The M67 was working fine, but the tolerance of the Tula actually wasn't uh, going really good with the with the with the Yugo, which is something I heard from some people overseas too. They were saying that they got a furniture of Yugo rifle and they give them to the Afghani police, and the Afghani police wasn't really happy about using them. And they actually, instead of them, they they rather to use uh, Hungarians or whatever you know, Romanian. Yeah. Because they you are really picky. I mean, if you ask me, they make the Zastava one of the best gun manufacturer. I mean, it's in um, they used to at least. Uh, but you know, it's it's a, it's a matter of what you again. It's a matter of what you're looking for. To me, uh, first take was like, oh boy, like a dream. <laughs> yeah. 
show, you know, and, and then Invasion USA, or, you know, you know, Missing Nation, you know, all those <laughs> movies, in the 80s, you know, the bad guys got all the AKs, you know, but. I, I think that's a big thing for a lot of people. I think it was for me as well, you know, with the AK. And the, and uh, I always and I always like the underfolder. I mean, even now I have an underfolder. Um, well, it's comfortable. If, the vehicle, if you're in a vehicle, it's, it's the best yeah. option. You know, it's like deploy and everything. You know, it's comfortable. Yeah. You can shoot it with, yeah. if you want to. Yeah. 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 I mean, and it like, you know, like we were saying before, I have the underfolder that I have is actually from American Tactical Imports. So okay. I don't I don't know how, you know, I'm sure people out there, you know, there's different reputations and all that, but it's milled. It's a, a milled one from um, ATI. And um, and I've actually I put in I know there's a question that someone asked about triggers and everything. But, you know, remember TACCON came out with the AK trigger? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the uh, assisted reset, so you can really just like uh, fire the crap out of an AK, and that's the trigger I put into that thing, and I haven't had any problems with it. So, gotcha. you know, the only my only complaint about it, it's an underfolder, which I like, but yeah, the, the you know that stock's uncomfortable. But there are there are solutions to that. I just haven't gotten around to putting like either I was going to wrap a uh, paracord around it or uh, find that rubber thing that um, Altenda was talking about. Yeah. It's two conversion kit technically. I don't remember right now the name the company makes them. Uh, I was talking about it and then um, because mine was really wobbly, okay. Oh, but then yeah. I have a little chitty chat with, with Mark Crab and then he's explained me how to fix it and, and, and I and make it even tighter now. So it's even impossible to like you gotta like do some go to the gym a little bit for Ben in order to fold the stock. But it is two companies that make conversion kit. One I think one I think is CAA, I think. And the other one, I don't recall the name. One is aluminum, and like an inter could be the tube, a commercial tube, and everything. So it's kind of uh, debating on that. And the other one is actually more like uh, you know, clamp on, pretty much clamp on the two holes that you're gonna leave when you remove the stock, you know, on the side. And it seems like I'm a little bit more solid. But again, you know, it's you're removing a little bit of the sexiness of the gun. You know, it's, it's yeah, you know, the, it's the whole coolness. Yeah, what makes it different? You gotta learn how to live with it sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. Right, Walter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like I like traditional AKs. I mean, I, I, I mean, a lot of people like to turn them into race guns, but it's like uh, you can only put you can only turn a pig, make a pig so fancy, I guess. I, now, now I, I know that's going to be debated, but um, <laughs> um, uh, I'm a traditionalist when it comes to AK. No, I yeah, I see where you're coming from. I mean, I've I've tacked out an AK, and it doesn't look as good. That's the reality of it. The, the truth of it is if you really want a super, I forgot what AK, I have, I don't know where that AK is from that I have that tacked out, probably Century Arms or something. But if you want to, if you really want to just tack out an AK, you probably should just get an AR. Well, if you give me a second, I can grab a couple of them. Yeah, sure. them. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Let me talk just a second on the camera because it's... Yeah, we'll, we'll talk amongst ourselves. Okay, <laughs> no worries. Yeah, I gotta go under the floor. You so know? what do you? So here's a question while Anton okay. is doing that, Walter. Uh, someone asked, "What about trigger slap with the Romanian AKs? Any experience with that? With the I've, trigger I've, slap? I've never really had problems with it. This one, this one here is all straight up. Well, you got a Romanian there? Uh, no, this is actually this has got a Tapco G2 trigger in it. Yeah, but, um, the G2 is a pretty good. The G2 trigger. Yeah, That's decent, I, right? What I hear, I mean, I, I haven't had no problem with this as far as when we say decent, you mean as far as trigger pull? Yeah, it's a lot better than your than your traditional AK. The a lot yeah, of triggers it's you. It's not find. bad. Yeah, it's not bad yeah. at all. Um, this one here, I I basically this is exactly the way I bought it, except I got a um, a laminated handguard thing to match the the rest of the laminated stocks on it, and um, you know, like with all the remaining guns, you got to make sure that the the front sights are on straight and stuff like that, but. It works fine. I mean, I've had no problems with it. Um, it is what it is. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a semi. You know, it's not a two thousand dollar rifle. So yeah. it's got you got to kind of get that through your head. That yeah. Now I think that. someone. I'm not sure who asked this question. I know Lola put it up here. I'm not. So I don't know who asked this, but uh, you know, obviously, because I know people are gonna get a little riled up. But someone says, "Are AKs only imported from Russia?" No. So. They, you know, I mean, that person, you know, obviously we don't know everything. Right, right. So, you know, we shouldn't jump on someone for assuming. No, no, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. they, they are, well, uh, 
Everything's been banned from Russia now, I guess. So. Yeah, I think, yeah, right now it's very difficult to get stuff from Russia because of, like, embargoes current, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, the, the current political stuff going yeah. on. But uh, are, they coming in, they're, are they coming in from China or China also China. embargoed? China's yeah. been embargoed for a long time or just yeah. one, of the, one of the bans, you know. Yeah, so what um, we're getting now, now is, what, you, like, you, Yugo? It's Yugoslavia? Yeah, you're getting uh, Yugos. You're getting... Um, there's still Romanian stuff. There's Yugo stuff. There's Bulgarian stuff. Um, the countries we've been playing fair with lately are they've been playing good with us. Um, yeah. Who else? Um, yeah, there's no Chinese, no Russian anymore. Um, oh gosh! And then of course now the Americans have stepped in, and you know, there's, yeah. There's and that's another that's another question that someone asked just to get that on the books. Also, uh, we some or a comment that someone made. They said we need more quality products made in the u.s <laughs> well yeah i mean sure um, why not absolutely yeah i mean um, yes getting, for yeah. the most but and it takes time it takes time right well yeah it takes time and all the money and, and money yeah money right 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 and yes and it's hard to please everybody when you start doing that stuff right i mean you're you're gonna and there's also a price point yeah you know, by the for, way right by the way walter chris says that the uh the norinko is all original Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So, do you want me to tell him to get in touch with you through no, private message? <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, uh, no, not right at the moment. Thank you, though. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of, uh, I, I got to just chill out a little bit. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Sometimes you got to slow down so you can bring yeah. up <laughs> and come back at it. So, you know what? Let's. Uh, so, what you were, you were asking ahead. about pistols. I'll tell you the pistols I have. Okay. I have, I have the Draco or Draco as you like to call it. Um, I have two of the NPAPs, one in seven six two and one in, I believe two twenty three, or no, that's yeah two twenty three with the Yugo mags, and then um, I have a um, it's an Interim Ordinance that they imported from Poland, mm -hmm. um, so it's oh, Polish. Right. It's, it's not an Interim Ordinance one. I, I forget the damn name of that. It was right on the tip of my tongue. Um, it's actually a nice little pistol. Um, and I have a couple I built myself um, from parts kits and, and such. This is a Hungarian parts kit that I that I now have to say people are going nice. to cringe. I welded the whole the, I welded the whole thing together. Yeah, the handguard looks interesting. Yeah, like it's just that. original AMD yeah. AMD sixty five. Yeah. Yeah. Is that light? Is that lightweight? Yeah, it's pretty light. Um, at the time when I bought this kit, I think the kits from Centerfire were like seventy five dollars with the barrel. They were they were they were dirt cheap, so yeah. I just I got a really cheap Hess receiver, and other people are gonna cringe there too. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did, and I went out in the shop with a TIG welder, and I welded the whole thing together in about a half an hour. There's and, plenty of nice, nice looking AK that don't work, so yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least so, I'm thinking I might put some finish on this eventually here. I just never get around to it, so. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad. Oh, it's the the the, the IO pistol I have is called a Hell Pup. Oh, Hell, Hell Pup. Pup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th that was another one I got dirt cheap when I think it was after in Newtown when the when the, everything slowed way down again. And um, okay. oh, okay. That, so you got that uh, a couple of years ago then? Yeah, that that's been a like, few years ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. That was a steal when I got that. I should have bought a few more of those. But um, so yeah. so you okay? So the uh, the Hell Pup. Did you get a chance to shoot it? Oh yeah, I shot the Hell Pup. And, and it, it was good. Everything it works good fine. It? Yeah, yeah, okay. cycles fine. I mean, when I first got my Draco, it wouldn't cycle hardly. It was, it really? was, it was. Uh, I, I had to take a file inside to the rails and kind of clean oh. it up a little bit, loosen it up, and then it came to life. But it would yeah. go bang, bang, stuck, bang, mm. bang, stuck, oh, and I'm like, what the hell? Mm. No. And t yeah, people, I have that too. People had this typical response: "You need to break it in." I'm like. Well, how many thousand rounds do I got to do? Wait, hold on. Uh, are they, there's not break-in periods with AKs, right? AKs, you shouldn't. You never had to break in a Chinese AK. Period. No, no. You go yeah, right but, out in the field and start shooting things. So you can make a. I mean, there is some. I mean, for uh, all my, except for of course the the expensive one. All my other AKs are I I buff all the internals. You know, and I mean, like the bolt carrier. You know, the part with the bolt carrier touch. You know, the trigger. I mean. Uh, Jim Jim Fuller did a couple of videos about how to actually tune up your AKs on the budget. I, th I think actually, Hank, you you were actually with him where he did where he was playing the stuff, right? In one of those videos. Um, 
Well, I know he was talking about right. it, but yes, that Jim Jim Fuller okay. is a good resource in, in his YouTube channel and stuff like that that he posts. If mm -hmm. you guys want to, you know, because I, I think he has several videos, right, Eltenda? Oh, yeah. On that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the beginning were more technical, how to, now they become more question and answer video. Um, he also did the DVD with Pantaya, what's the company, Pant, whatever that company, many years ago, and it's still a good video. Mm hmm. Uh, anything about a case by the video you're gonna learn I mean a, 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 a lot because yeah and there's also some good books out there I don't know if you guys uh, there's a book uh, I can't remember do you remember the name of any books I can't remember there's one that I was reading but I can't remember the name of it now uh, there is a big ass one which I don't remember the Grim Reaper I think it's called oh, yeah, 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 I have it right up here yeah oh yeah uh, can you pull it out oh, yeah hold on hold on I'll get it <laughs> anyway, the book the book Walter the book the book the book pull out the book nothing else yeah so what's that? What what um, what do you have there? What do you have uh, there, Tender? Ninety two pep, which I, I changed more part on this one rifle. In this on this rifle, than most of my other So going from the front, you got the JMAT JMAC tactical. Right, that's the one. That's the book. Okay, hold on. Let's flip back. Hold on a second. Let me flip back to Walter so everyone can see this. So it's AK forty seven, the Grim Reaper. Right. Yeah. And nice, like you said, nice it's, big book. it's thick. Yeah, yeah. coffee table book. Yeah, that's, 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 a, yeah <laughs> that's a good read. That's a good read, you know, when the electricity lots, goes out. <laughs> lots of pictures for you pitcher guys like me. So, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Lots of reference. Yeah. yeah. I know it's old school. I don't know if that's a, available in a digital uh, or a PDF or something. Probably on some forum that it, it's possible, it, but that would be a massive PDF. And Amazon. that's um, by Frank Insamano, I think his name, or? Mm -hmm. Intimate, so, yeah, something like that. It's it's out there. It's, I think there's a second edition of it now, actually. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. All right. Let's go back real quick to El Tenda. So, what were you showing us? Uh, what I was saying, I'll see. Yeah, the break is a J Mac tactical break for the M92, which work. I mean, it's it's crazy when you shoot it. It's like very, very, really. Uh, there is a video. I actually did a video in slow motion. You can see. But the impressive thing is actually the effect effectiveness as far uh, recoil. The gun doesn't barely move. Of course, the pressure has to yeah. go somewhere. Yeah, I mean that's a, you know that's the thing with brakes. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and then I use the Manticore Arms. Uh, what they call it? Renegade Amgard mount. I recall the name right now. For the, sorry, mount for the red dot. Yeah, as a rail, a Picatinny on the top. You are losing the co-witness. You're gonna use only the red dot with this. That's that's one of the things I don't like, but. Since it's a pistol, I can live with that. And then I put a magpul, whatever they call it, this thing. I only call it the <laughs> vertical. Uh, what is that? A vertical grip? Well, uh, yeah. uh, angled, angled grip. Angle grip. Yeah. You want to be legal. Yeah, angled. yeah you want to be legal, legal, yeah. legal, legal. Yeah, legal. Yeah. Angled. Yeah, angled. It's angled, not vertical. <laughs> and I put some talon grip uh, material over here. And going on the back, uh, circle 10 AK, the extended uh, charging angle. Uh, yeah, try to hold it still. Yeah, there you go. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, that's a nice big uh, charging handle. I'll do. I mean, it's that's what you need if you go. Yeah. And then I put the crepe safety si safety, of course. Right. Like every, every um, sorry, in all of my guns, uh, trigger is the same. I polish everything inside. I put some a little, little bit longer trigger pin because the trigger was a little bit walking a little bit too much. Let me check out one thing on. on uh, okay, the adapter for the stock is the USA K forty seven. Dot com. I'm looking right now because I don't remember it, honestly. <laughs> and the adapter is like a really solid adapter. You can see it goes underneath yeah. the pistol grip. I have a and question. I have a question. Do they, do they make an adapter that'll take a folder, a side folder? Sure. Uh, I believe they do. I believe they do. Yeah. You got you to gotta contact them. I think they're on Facebook too. Okay. Uh, you, Krebs? You're talking about Krebs, right? You no, these guys. USA. Oh, USA. Okay. I believe so. Oh, there is another company otherwise otherwise that makes it. Then again, Og Grip, as we mentioned before, works fine. Keck uh, buffer tube. I put a cast on that just in case, not necessary, but just in case. And the blade, uh, brace, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I, I like it. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's it is what it is. You know, now it costs probably three times what it used to be the original gun, probably, but. And you know, and then you know, that's for all my. That's not too bad. That's not too badly tacked out or anything, though. No. That's not. Yeah, that's decent. Oh wait, ah, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Ah, oh, damn it. He's pulling a sock. He's pulling the socks off that bad boy. That's... that's the first gun, actually, the Wozer. Yep, that's the first gun. On the front, you got a circle 10 break with a three. I don't, I don't remember how they call it right now, but you can look yeah, up on the got... website. They're really. I noticed you like those brakes, man. <laughs> and that, that, that brake is vented backwards, I see, right? Little, no, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, and I angle a little bit. It's like uh, inspired by the Russian ones. Okay. And like I mentioned before, you got a mag pool again underneath, and I don't know if you can see it. TDI lower end guard, yep. Ultimac. Yep. I don't remember what's this one is the MB, MB, M1B, sorry. The, the lower end guard is the LHV47 TDI. Again, for I bought this one on most of the stuff on Circle 10 AKs. I don't mind. A Bushnell trophy in every single rifle. I mean, for what it costs, for me, it works fine. I mean, 70, but I, it's, I don't know. The, and the Crab peep site. I don't know if you can see them. Oh, yeah. Very effective. Yeah. Extended charging handle again, Circle 10. Of course, Crab safety. This one is the, one of the first, actually, generations. As you can see, it's different than the other one, yeah. the level of the top. Actually, Mark was surprised when I showed the gun. Like, oh, you have one of those. I'm like, because it's so, <laughs> so old. Yeah. And then uh, Oak Grip, of course. Crab Custom Stock Adapter. It's one of the new products that have just come out recently. Again, you can put a buffer tube, a new spec, buffer, buffer tube. QD mount, Sling, uh, the Bravo company, I think it is. First stock, which for me is one of the best mil spec stock on the market for the price. Yeah, yeah mission. Yeah, the mission first is uh, lightweight. It's a cool stock. Uh, did you paint? Did you paint that? It looks like it's painted. Yeah, it's pretty painted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Army. What do you think you learn in the army? <laughs> yeah. I, I use a spray rattle can, whatever they call it, and it's pretty much uh, automotive primer. Black now it used to be gray before. And then a uh, big coat of uh, gray, and then I do stri stripe of uh, FD uh, desert, stripe of brown, and then I take a laundry mesh bag, you know, like those white ones, cutting stripe, put on top of the gun, and, and go ahead and doing a little bit of stripe. So you kind of kind of look like a. It's kind of hard to tell with the with the screen, but yeah, look like a. So snake let me just. Right. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. So let me just uh, let me just make this a public service announcement here real quick. Oh. <laughs> Chris is saying that his friend would take seven hundred bucks for the <laughs> Rinko. <laughs> you, yeah, you know, uh, you pay shipping. Uh, he says it's on Arms List Ohio, and oh. the numbers here. If and if you know, if anyone's interested or whatever, oh, you know, um, there that's you go. Not a, not a bad price. Yeah. yeah. No, that's no. that's actually that sounds pretty good. Pretty good. So if anyone's looking for something like that, check out Arms List Ohio. So I don't mind giving a shout out to the arms list dudes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Thanks. those are good guys. So you got it. You got another one. Well, I got another two. Oh, okay. Uh, the next one is actually the the one born the wrong way. Uh, Seventy four with the wrong barrel. Oh. So <laughs> seventy, uh, we, we, which they convert, they, they change it eventually. Uh, the receiver is actually nice. It was made by Snodak Spud, which actually yeah, was. Okay. For the AK. Uh, again, this one is from. Uh oh, I'm buffering. Okay, full break from um, Circle 10 AK. Um, the Ultimac, this one is an M2B. Uh, you can see the difference as the holes on the side. Again, uh, Magpul, uh, whatever they call it. Vertical. Yeah, and then uh, Bushnell Trophy, of course. I think I bought from the website, Rifle Dynamics website, uh, their sites. So they modify them like we discussed in the other video. Remember, it's the open is all in the center. They round up the sides so they help mm -hmm. with focus. Again, Circle 10 uh, K. This one is the different one. This one is the lightweight one. The, I think it's aluminum. It's actually flush instead of being uh, in all the part I'm charging in. Really nice. It's not like one of those Chinese you buy on eBay. They come off after a turn around. Um, Crab Custom Safety. Go figures, of course. And O grip. This one is the rifle dynamic stock adapter, which is slightly different than the crab one, but similar in, in design. Both of them, when you install them, you put a stock. They help you with the cheek raise. So you know, the AK most of the time. And the stock is the Magpul STR. Yeah. 
All right, whatever. That's what I got in my end. I'm not a fan of Mike Bull anyway, but except for yeah, I, I think I think El Tendo likes AKs. <laughs> if anyone's watching, oh, that's <laughs> totally right. serious with his AK game. Is you got the other So let me hold on one second, El Tendo. Let's uh, hit up a question here just to make a little break. Um, uh, okay, so Walter, the Tyven Show wants to know what's the average accuracy of an AK versus AR. And wow. Walter, go first, and then El Tenda, if you want to take this, you could jump in. Wow. There's I'm a lot of variables there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends a lot on ammo and the, and, and the shooter and the gun, the barrel, too. I mean, you know, if you've got a um, – I would say yeah. probably um, on average at, a, at 100 yards, you should probably be able to do a, a three-minute of angle, four-minute of angle, something like that, if you're halfway decent. I mean, with an AK? With an AK, yeah, yeah. So a three or four inch group. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So with an AR, what do you think? Well, I mean, AR, you once again, you probably it's gonna be get, smaller, smaller yeah, circle. Yeah, it's yeah, you probably get down to that inch and a half too without too much problem. Um, then again, it's all about ammo. I know those guys that have hand loaded their own AK ammo and bring it down like an AR. So, you know. Yep. And I guess types of barrels I mean, and things like that matter, right? Yeah, we took we took the AK class with with I took an AK class with uh, with Mark and and the arrive and the Crab Custom guy and there was a guy eating at 400, you know, and it wasn't even a sniper, a regular guy with iron sights, okay, and the group was like yay big at 400, so like sorry that big at 400, we give a rap, you know what I mean, and there was a was a 7.62. I heard that Jim was saying that one one with the rifle dynamics 74 and Orna the ammo. Travis Sally was well, which is Travis Sally, of course. <laughs> was eating at <laughs> right 500, 600. Not sure about it. Something impressive. I mean, maybe 400, 500. Not sure about it. There's a video about it. If you go on their page, Rifle Dynamics YouTube page, there's actually a video of Travis shooting it, which you know it's Travis, you know, of course. But you know, I think people underestimate the AKs. There's a bunch yeah. of factors. Yes, human factor, of course. Yeah. You know, uh, um, wait, uh, you know, but you know, conditions that but, day when you're you, trying to shoot. You have to remember the gun's not designed to do that. That's not the purpose of an AK to shoot 600 nope. yards. It's 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 a it's a it's a close in urban kind of thing for an AK. Yeah, it, you know. yeah. yeah, like yeah, like the, the same concept of the the German star star Sturmgewehr. You know, same yeah. pretty much concept. So you know, close combat. You know, 300 meter maybe. You know, assault rifles. Yeah. you assault awesome. the position, right? Yeah. That's why in Afghanistan, the the bad guys use Mosin the Guns and pick our and shoot at our guys five six hundred yards away, and our mm -hmm. guys can't shoot back because the AR fifteen won't do it. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta pick up. You gotta go in the arsenal and take out the the armor and take out the M twenty ones. Yeah, I mean, isn't that why so many guys are just getting Mosins, right? If you if you want to have like an old school, you know, sniper rifle, you get a Mosin, right? I mean, it'll it'll get the job done. Yeah. Mm hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, you gotta think about the ammo. The Mosin is still using on the PKM nowadays. A PK, whatever, you know, it's the same exactly yeah. ammo. The 7.62 by 54R. I mean, it's what a 1800 ammo, not even 1900. It's even older. Yeah. So, but you know, it works fine. You know, I like, I like. I mean, I like Mosin. I got two of them. But if I have to pick up a bolt action rifle, that I enjoy shooting is the Mauser. Yeah. For yeah. Some, I love the ammo. Yeah, the 80 millimeter is an amazing round. You know? Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Mr. Holster says, El Tenda, he wants you. Yeah. To, he wants to send this message to you. Jack says he's. Uh, he says hi, and he's holding his bepper while he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> he's stroking his bepper. <laughs> we should get. No, actually, I do have a bepper. Sorry, but it's not. It's not a bepper, bepper, but. Yeah. But, you know. I'm holding my tanto barrel close to my heart. <laughs> That's another good. That's actually another good rifle. I really like the Tantal is a is a sweet shooting rifle if you like five four five. I mean, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can't hardly beat it for that. You no. couldn't find you could find them years ago. I remember I had a chance. Almost there was a guy a gun shop friend of mine. He had the PPS H PPS H whatever forty three. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the stock wasn't you know was of course extended, not foldable, but Polish imported from Poland. You have a Tantal, and what else he had? Some some other kind of weird uh, Western Eastern, Eastern Bloc gun that you don't find nowadays, you know, easily, you know. Right. You know, it's one of those things. You know, you gotta buy whatever 
you know nowadays as many guns i would like to buy surplus man i don't have money for you know right. everybody everybody's like oh cz 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 everybody had a mouthful of cz dude alexis you know since when 1992. okay congratulations <laughs> you know what i mean it was a real cz the 75 the 82 yeah. the three, right, you know right, I mean? right 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 yeah, I mean, you know, CZ is kind of hot. They're putting out some uh, some cool guns. That's that's the thing. So, Walter, can we just go back real quick to that barrel yeah. that you were showing? Is that a pinned muzzle device on that, or on the Tantal? It's just standard AK type thing with a oh okay with with a with a detent with a spring. You just unscrew it left hand oh, okay. thread. So yeah. oh, okay, right, but, okay. But it's uh, this gun. Yeah. This gun with that five four five is like really easy shooting. I mean, it's just like. You're like, oh wow! Did it? It's nothing like a regular 762 AK. Yeah, and they start making those because they didn't want to pay the copyright to the Russian for the 74. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they have, the quality on the Polish stuff is way past the Russian stuff too. In my oh, yeah, opinion, so, yeah. And, and I worked for a couple with a, a couple of points. Yeah, I mean they're really picky. They give an idea how accurate they are, which is a good thing, you know, for a mechanical shop. Yeah. You know, it's. A, I mean, and again, you know, a Romanian. See, the problem is when you import something and you chop the gun and then you rebuild it, you know, who knows what the hell is going to, you know, I, I would never build one. I would like to build one, but, you know, you got to take a class to me, you know, my point of view. And this guy we're talking before, Ziki shot, he built a bunch of them. And I and he posted a bunch of video how to put, you know, uh, rivets and stuff. It's really interesting. You know, it doesn't yeah. require a lot of tools per se. Yeah. You know? Right, most, but but you have to have the patience. Like Babyface, for example, is a very patient yeah. dude when it comes to yeah, <laughs> when yeah, it comes yeah. to this. Because the first time you get in a hurry and you don't know what you're doing, you'll screw everything. Oh yeah, yeah, and you might as well throw that receiver away then and get another one. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and and again, you know, it's uh, I like you know, on this century. You know, if you look on the rivet, there's no there is a little bit of gap on the back. I mean, again, the gun works fine. That's the second one, and I bought. And again, I put a bunch of crap on this one too. Yeah. And it's pretty yeah. much the same stuff you saw on the other one, you know, the TDI, Ultima. The only difference, I think, this one is the Strike Industries AK, the new AK break, which actually is supposed to work really well. Other than that, is a, whatever you saw before, Ultima, you know, TDI, blah, 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 you know, Vapor, sorry, uh, um, Crab Custom Safety, pretty much the same thing. The only thing I do on all mine, actually, I forgot to mention that, I changed the retainer, retaining plate for the trigger pins, you know. Most of the time, they come with the Shepard hooks, it yeah, looks like right. a, you know a paper clip i normally buy it depends on the model not all the model works uh crab custom works and everything i couldn't use a crab on my uh pop so i have to use a cnc warrior he makes them it's a good company to little shop that make really good stuff but as you was talking about under folder mine in order to engage the crab safety i have to grind off a part of the stock Okay. It's not to be a decent job actually. So I could, actually I can engage the safe the crab safety even when the stock is actually folded, which is actually kind of interesting. And I put some rubber foaming thing over here with some duct tape and it works fine. You know? yeah. Yeah. But it's really duct tape. Duct tape will solve a lot of problems. <laughs> but it's there, you know. It's really, really. I mean, it's. I mean, so I that doesn't know. mess with the structural integrity of the stock by. Uh... No. No. Okay. Because exactly. That that, that that folding stock is that is a solid one, right? It's a, a machined one. Yeah, yeah, it's the Romanian, Romanian, of course. It like, see, it's one piece of like, it's like one rounded, you know, not like your one is. Oh stamped. yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that's probably pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a little wobbly, so in order to do that, you gotta take off the part and then somehow, you know, tie these screws over here, the thing over here. And I mean, it's it's solid. I mean, you can see, except for the pad, which is still moving, the stock per se is like it's like not going anywhere. And, uh, and it's it is what it is. You know? Again, you end up putting at end up putting probably four hundred bucks apart, roughly, mm -hmm. yeah. or fifty on a four hundred bucks gun. Does it make any better gun? Maybe. You know, I never right. actually try to find out if the there's any imperfection as far as building, you know, if it's the front running is crooked. I never actually, I mean, visible, no, but you never know. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. I know people that don't want to deal with the AK anymore because they, the, the sorry, certainly AK, because as soon as they start opening them or going down, then they find more and more problems, you know? So, you turn out, a little thing can turn down a clusterfuck, you know? Yeah. So, so here's, a, here's another question, uh, Walter. Uh, yes. 
Are there AKs that take AR mags? So this is what people want to know. Do we yeah, have AKs yeah, yeah. that take well, AR mags? We're getting we're getting more and more of them, right? I don't I don't have one. Um, one of the MPAPs takes um M6 AR15 mags, but yeah. I, I never got around to buying one. Um, um, yep. Yeah. Do you have one of those, El Tendo? No, I have a friend that uh, actually had a problem with his uh, full size one. The pistol one, the pistol I think is called M95. I'm not sure about yeah, it. Probably. Yeah. The pistol works pretty well. The full size rifle, which is actually based on an M, uh, on a PAP, like port PAP, like yeah, that one. And uh, that one oh, actually. Let me, let me lock this on. Go ahead, Walter. Show it. I just locked it on you. That one I heard yeah, this, this is a... was having problem over gassing or something like that for some reason. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just show this again, Walter. Just hold it up. I want to see the uh, the uh, the thing on the side there for mounting. Oh, so that's scope? something. Yeah, that's something that I found is um, you know it's helpful to have that side mounting thing because you can get a real solid mount of a scope or something like that if you want to put it on there. What do you guys think about that? Um, oh, yeah. For, yeah, unfortunately though, they vary a lot from country to country, mm -hmm. and finding a mount I heard that fits properly is going to be a challenge sometimes. Yeah, I think I think it's RS Regulate. I'll tend to help me out here. Is it RS Regulate that makes those? Oh, uh, the, the 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 what? Sorry, the side mount. You know, like if you have that if you have that attachment. I'm yeah, sorry. well, Century makes one. I think most of the AK that I have come with most of them. No, no, no. I'm, but I'm talking about the people that make the mounts that actually goes on ah, there. That I is, think, that is, uh, the Midwest industry. Okay, Century. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Midwest probably makes one. I think there's a company called RS Regulate that makes a good one that oh, I have. Probably. Yeah. So you can even buy them on eBay. I mean, back in time, they're made in China. They're awful. You know, it's like a block of aluminum with with a, with a screw and, and a level. But yeah. I mean, I, I I use them with the Gen One for a while. You know, the big scope. You know, whatever you can find affordably for a decent uh, for affordable price, and it makes kind of sense you know because of this the night vision is russian you know of course or belarusian as you should say maybe in belarusia or russia and, and you mounted on the it kind of makes sense the way you you actually you know look through but as far optics i only i like i show you guys i have ultimax with a with a with a with a bush now they work fine because the the ultimax allows you to co you know co-witness the two sides with the red dot again it's nothing now and i'm a sniper or anything i'm pretty much blind but <laughs> well, you know, and but you know, I, there's people that put scopes and everything. Again, you know, it's personal preference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I some people, yeah, some people don't want that. I know people ask me all the time, like, you know, I'm going to put a scope on here. What can, like anything over a red dot, it gets, you know, you need you need something solid to mount it to. Yeah, exactly. All the yeah. Two. Yeah, they all do because some scope. If you put in an AK, it probably will destroy the scope. You know, they have something yeah. that. Yeah. There's a the, lot. There's a lot going on with an AK when the bolt's going back. And, yeah, and I've uh, tried. Like I don't know if you guys have tried the the dust covers. If you're gonna do a dust cover to mount something, definitely don't get a cheap one because yeah. that doesn't really work. There's a there's a bunch of dust covers out there that you think you're gonna do something. It's a pain. It's a total pain in the ass mm -hmm. to use the dust cover. So I think what, that. Sorry, go ahead. You no, I was going to say, Walter, usually what do you mount if you put up? Are you just using iron sights usually with the AKs, or do you mount any kind of optics on there? I know El Tenda's got, a, you know, optics. He's got the, what was that? That was, um, El Tenda. Yeah, what uh, What are you using? Burris, the uh, red dots? What are the no, red dots? Bushnell Trophy Bush TMS 25. Okay, yeah. And the only one, the only different one, I have a primary arms. I don't remember the name of the model. Look. It's made by primary arm. That is actually on the crab carton. It's a little bit better than the Bushnell. A little bit better. Again, the Bushnell trophy, you can find it for when it's on sale, $79. Yeah. If you're lucky, 60 use, which is new. You know, Amazon works. Sometimes the stuff is perfectly new. And, you know, but to, to my, um, what I need, you know, it's per perfectly fine. You know, I know people that use scope mounts on their AK, but you know, nice scope, sorry, uh, scout mounts, you know, sc scout scopes, sorry. You know, but again, you know, to me, it's like, I don't think is, you know, nah, nah. Yeah, some people put the mounts that attach where the, where, yep. the, where the front, where the side is and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't have an AK with, a, with an optic on it. Not the mm -hmm. time, not this time, anyways. I guess I should. Um, oh, I, I do have a, what, we're gonna are we gonna include a PSL in the AK family? 
the Romanian PSL? Technica. Well, yes, yes and no. <laughs> Yeah. I don't even know. So show us. What are we talking about? Oh, I'd have, have to one? dig it out. But it's, oh, it's okay. Seven six two fifty four, basically AK. And the, the, the Romanian version of the Dragunov, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only problem with those—they're not a problem. I'm a lefty. I pick up left. So if I use a scope that comes with the rifle, it don't work very well. It's made for a right-handed shooter. Oh, um, okay. So, and I have a couple of those scopes, but I probably won't end up using them. Um, <laughs> But I'd probably buy an aftermarket. I've got one being made right now, actually. Um, are you guys familiar with Troy Sellers of in-range? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in-range C2. Yeah, he's putting together a PSL for me right now. So oh, nice. Um, is that the um, you were tell? There was something different with that one, right? Or is that a completely seven six two by fifty four? Oh, okay. So, so, so the PKM type cartridge or Mosin yeah. cartridge, yeah. Um, and that one's getting put together with a with a receiver that's set up to use a regular AK grip so you don't yep. you don't get stuck they make like a thumb hole stock for it and it's kind of it's kind of funky once again it's set up for a right-handed shooter and I'm not so much a right-handed shooter so um, yeah um, so, we'll so. have that I was kind of waiting to do the hopefully do the video and we get that so we can kind of show the different variations there you go right there yeah so hold on let me lock this on antenna okay there you go 7.62 by 39 versus 7.62 by 54R. Yeah. Yeah. The taller one is the 54R. Correct. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Big super story, as I call it. That, that will fix everything. Yeah. Although I have a friend actually was shooting a, a Mosin the other day. He had some, uh, I'd be then, Hugo. Actually, Hugo 7.62 by 54, which is weird. I, I didn't know they, they use it, but. And they they had he had some problem with the breast. It was actually splitting. You know when when the breast cracks, just mm -hmm. weird. All right, they normally you go make good ammo. I have yeah. some older. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the um, you know. However, that it's something in the metal, right? That has something to do with metallurgy, probably. It could, yeah. It could also have something to do with the chamber versus mm -hmm. the cartridge too. So, yeah. you know, a lot of yeah. times, a lot of times it's the brass. Um, I've seen a lot of nine millimeter subgun ammo that cracks when you fire it. Hmm. Nothing happens except the brass just cracks and then it gets tossed out of the gun. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, is it really cracking or splitting? What turn? <laughs> <laughs> tomato, tomato. You know, I guess. You know. Right. Okay. Okay. So, um, someone wants us to. I guess uh, you know. Someone. Uh, I think it's the Tyvan show. He's asking us. Then, what's the What's the reliability of an AK versus an AR? Reliability. Oh. <laughs> Who goes first? You Easy go. Game. You go. You go if, first, Walter. You go first. If I had to fight in, if I had to survive in an environment where I had no tools, mm -hmm. I go AK all the way. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, if I don't, I, I don't, I don't have my Rand CLP. I don't have my, I don't have my cleaning brushes to clean the the, the finicky little uh, barrel extension out and everything. Yep. Okay, it it'll yep. shoot. You know, you'll clean it with some dirt and wash it off in the stream and go at it. You know. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you want to be fancy, you take a show lace with a couple of notes and you clean the barrel of the AK with that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna I'm just not just to be devil's advocate here, but I'm oh, gonna Lord. disagree with you guys on that. Uh, you can, but you we'll... know, you're you're gonna. I mean, because I I think that an AR. Hey, I, is, I tell you what, I tell you uh, what, an we'll... AR is more reliable. And what are you saying? I can't just clean an AR out with anything. It I'll, might I'll... give me cancer, but I can use I can use any kind uh, of oils I find. <laughs> I'll I'll take you on. You know, you can wash you can I'll... wash an AR if you want to, man. There's lots of nowadays. There's Let's... lots of uh treatments that you've oh, got yeah. on stuff that you can run ars dry so i don't I, I, that's I, not the, that's not the that's not the problem what's it's, the problem it's, it's got too many little parts and pieces that to fall out and break and get lost yeah, but how many rounds are you going to put through an ar before you break pieces i haven't broken i'm not saying that it's not going to happen well um, you, you always want to do a torture test i'll take you on if you want <laughs> okay all right okay. we'll do we'll do an old school Shoot it, throw it in the dirt, shoot it, throw it in yeah, the dirt. Let's do it. I mean, because here's the thing. I think an AK is more open and more things can get inside an AK, and an AR is, is more closed and less things can get inside yeah, but the problem of, an, is, of an AR. The problem is the AK would work anyway with that stuff. So if you I, get money, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, cycle if, anyway. if you get, yeah, if you get in a bad way with the AK and dirty, just take it apart and wash it off. 
Yeah, but you guys are making it seem like AKs just work no matter what. I mean, I've shot a lot of AKs, and they don't all work, and they how don't many, work no matter let's what. Go, let's go back to the homeland of some – how many AR-15 or M-16s you see Trumps in around Africa? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I don't, I don't know. You don't. I mean <laughs> – Because they don't yeah. last. <laughs> see? <laughs> they Probably don't. fire. Yeah, there's, the lots of, there's lots of countries around the world that are adapting the, uh, you know, adapting M16s and stuff like that. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, versus, versus AKs, huh? The regulars, you know, the insurgent and the jungle, they don't use an M. I mean, except yeah, but there's a reason why the insurgents aren't doing that. Come on now. Well, you know, I mean, if you're if you're illiterate, an AK is perfect for you. <laughs> but you don't have to be that. You don't have to be that literate to know how to use an AR. Okay. You know who's the, the I mean, person? come on now. We live in the South. <laughs> it's not a matter of literacy. You know I'm not trying to say the dudes here aren't very uh, literate because it's very, you know very smart people. Person? But, you know, I mean, I think that the reason why you see AKs used in so many countries is they're just so available and they're That's, easy to use. That is part of it. You, uh, yeah. You, you know, know it's, it's pretty straightforward and simple. But, you know, that doesn't that doesn't. I don't agree with the fact that it's uh you know that it's automatically better than an AR. You want to know my my second choice? What? FN fall. Yeah, thank you. You take an FN FAL over still every, over every, an AR every day. Every day. Long barrel, you know, you can decide you can have full auto, single auto like the British I think had the single and the Argentinian the full auto something like that the Falkland. Anyway, South Africa, Rhodesians Okay, Those we're, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to test this. We're gonna have to put this to the test. I will I will fly over if you find me one. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to put this to the test. We're gonna have to go. Here, here's what we have to do though, Walter. We yes. go to a store. We buy an AK. We buy an AR. Why do we have to buy one? Because I mean, you know, we don't want special circumstances going on here. I'll take one, I'll take people's... I'll take one of mine. Okay. All right. However you want to do it. I mean, you know, but we have to get, you know, we have to make sure that there's no special circumstances because that's what you're saying. The average AR, the average AK standards. How about we take you know. the, I got a washer here. We'll just take the washer and use it. Okay. That might work. Eh? Yeah. And we're that's putting it in the dirt. We're putting it in the sand. All yeah. of that, right? Throwing it, throwing it in the water, throwing it in the mud. Yeah. We're slapping it up against metal. No, we're not going to purposely, we're not going to beat it purposely because you wouldn't do that in the field. You wouldn't that use your happen. gun. To... That could happen in the field. Well, we're gonna run over it. Yeah, you can run over it. You know, you could. It, it could fall down. All kinds of stuff can uh, happen. I'm gonna take the AK get run over. I can straighten that out better with a with a pry bar than you can an AR-15. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, I think we should put it to the test because I think I think that that's a, there's a little bit of myth going on there. I'm not. I'm not knocking the AK. I like AKs. No, no. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, I just think the AR is a way better machine. It's a better machine, and it's, it's. Um, I, I think it's actually more reliable. I think it's just a myth. The AK-47, except when it's turning 74, it has been always the same gun, pretty much, right? The M16, right. where was Armalite, what they call the R15, whatever Armalite. Since yeah. then. They have to change a lot of things to make it work fine. Because the, the, when they first was in Vietnam, I don't think the guys were really happy to carry their rifle around. You know, between mud, bad cartridge, you know, and everything. Right. The Navy SEALs were toner, you know, and, and AKs, you know, most of the time, you know. Or all the, all the, call it the, the Swedish K, you know, yeah, something like that. Yeah, but we've come a long way since then. We've come a long way since then. Mm. Of, yeah. Oh, it's give the, you know, the possibility to evolve, you know, every gun is going to get better. You know, it's, it's not like in a Browning M M2, you know, the old machi the machine mm -hmm. gun. That hasn't changed a lot since 19, whatever, 30s, whatever it is. I think they know? started in the late 20s, actually, yeah. So, you know what I mean? Some design, you cannot, you know, the Browning, I power, gun like that, 1911s, yeah. there's not much you can change about it. I mean, you can talk make it work better. Yeah. yeah. Talk about it. Talk it. You, know. yeah. you know, when you get into... To, even the Breda 92, M92, or M9, whatever you want to call it, if you put a cheap made in Mexico magazine, like some, unfortunately, was happening to some of the unit deploy or Mexico, whatever were made, the spring, the butt, you know, the butt plate, whatever you want to call it, the magazine was actually falling out. So the magazine were crap. So if you put a cheap part on a good one, 
You know what I mean? Even if you got a good mm -hmm. design, there's always been an issue. The same story with the AK, you know. There's a big debate about which is the best magazine in the world. I'm like, okay, depend. What are you gonna do? Plink at the range? Okay. <laughs> and again, I'm not getting paid by these people because I yeah, we discussed yeah. it before. If I got a range, Tapco is fine. I don't like Maple's magazines. Uh not bashing them. Uh, I'm gonna try the same thing. Yeah, for for AKs, yeah. I think US palms are pretty good. US palm, but they got pro and cons too. You know, you can't really clean them, you know what I mean? They got pro and cons. Uh, you know, steel magazine always the best, but depend what you which one is you which one is the steel magazine. I have Chinese yeah. steel magazines. Those East are German. It's German Chinese. Those are like yeah. what are the powder coated? There's some powder coated ones I've used. Uh, I can't remember what the magazine? name of it is. Yeah, there's some powder coated steel ones, but I can't remember the name. Hmm. There's a there's a there's a place that makes these like uh, powder coated steel AK magazines. Yeah. Like a company, mean? Oh. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember what it is. Um, if I have my choice, it's a good old East German steel magazine. Yeah. Can't beat exactly. them. They're, they're finished nice. They're, they're well okay, made. so the, what I thought now, like, what's the desirable AK magazines? I thought it was Bakerlite, right? The Bakerlite. Bakerlite. That's seven Yeah, and then you got the whatever the, the what do you call the Bulgarian ones? You know, there's a waffle. Then they got a waffle. Then they got the one without the rib. Ribs, whatever they call them, you know, the original, the first magazines, those are the slab side. But those stuff, I, yeah, slab side. Thank you. I mean, those stuff, I want. I have, I have all of them, but those are for picture only. Right, right, right. You know, for the range, I use Tapco. Again, I'm not getting paid by them. Really? But whatever yeah. they cost. So me. you like Tapco? Yeah. You like we the Tapco, Tapco Max? I mean, yeah. I mean, what's, I, what's I, up with that, I've never, I don't have a lot of experience with them, so yeah. Forty-seven, they're fine. Okay. Especially the one they made after, not the one with the with the with the flat, you know, with the waffle pattern. The, yeah. the one that looked like big uh, flick light, or whatever they, they call them. Yeah, uh, I don't. I didn't like the Magpul at all. Okay, you, I've always I, heard. I, I've always heard that friends don't let friends use Tapco magazines. <laughs> you don't. You don't like the new. You, you, don't, you don't like the new um, Magpul AK Max. I haven't tried the one with the metal lip. I only oh, okay. had the, okay. the first gen, and I wasn't impressed. They end up okay. flying. Downrange oh, and a class. Okay. All, all, I, all yeah. I have, I just have the second gen, so that's all I can say. Yeah. Okay. And I like Croatians because they got, even if you got to end feed them sometime, they're really good because you got the follower open, you know, last yeah. round open, which is a good Yugo feature. Yugoslavian. Yeah. Yugoslavian, Croatian, whatever, yeah. love, you know, Serbian, whatever. And um, what else is the one I like? Promeg. No. <laughs> no yeah no. nothing nothing much from pro mag works they do have some so. made in bulgaria range friendly magazine uh, i think uh got nak sell them and uh, cnn i think is the other company C cnn is this called the company cdnn CD, CD, cdnn yeah, yeah. so they, they look like bake light they are fake light but you know they have a <laughs> reinforcement 10 12 dollar a piece so for range you know, work fine. If I was fighting a war, I'd take a steel magazine any time. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. No, again, back on what we were saying, you know, if I go the range, you know, I got my M67 ammo, you go ammo, I would never shoot that stuff. I keep it for, you know, when the bad times come, that's the stuff you want to use. For for range, I can use Tula, whatever. I'm not picky about ammo. Right. Although in the 74, you have to. In the 74 platform, there is a little bit of discussion going on. I have to test some of the Red Army stuff. They just sent me two cases or two cases, two boxes, whatever. A um, little bit of problem in some of the AKs. Uh, 545, sorry. And as, as far as ammo goes, I, I mean, I, I use everything. I mean, it's, I'm not picky about it. You know, again, uh, surplus stuff used to be the best stuff, probably, you know, for, for, for performance between slashes, you know. Uh, oh no, well, you gotta clean your gun. Big deal, man. It's an AK. What's the yeah, best? Ma what's the best magazine for the money? Like, so, you know, if money is an object, what's the best, uh, you know, value magazine that you could buy? Go ahead, for you first, and then I. I'll oh, I don't. Um, steel mags. Just the um, steel ones. You're saying, right? Yeah. Right. I mean. Right. Yeah. 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 You gotta. I get. I guess it, it's luck of the draw sometimes because you might get a good deal and they might be kind of beat up and ugly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I like the. I like the steel ones I told you about that I've bought that are powder coated. I cannot remember the name of them, yeah. but those are expensive. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you see that like I got them cheap and they were like thirty bucks each. Ow! <laughs> that's not cheap. Wow! <laughs> yeah. Ow! So that's what. I mean. That's what I mean. <laughs> you got the Hank Strange. Yeah. No, I <laughs> yeah. They're, 
Yeah. So I mean, my suggestion. But they were great, though. They were and, great. Uh, I mean, I've used them like in training and stuff like that. So dirty box, they better be great. Yeah, they were. They were. Uh, my, uh, my my suggestion is look up. And again, I'm not getting paid by anybody of these people. No one of these people. Um, CDNN, they got good sales on magazines. AM, Sur AM, AAM surplus, whatever those company over there. I circle ten AK. If you keep your eye open, they got big batches of magazines. They got circle, you know, circle ten, circle twenties. They got backlight. They got steel magazine. They even have use range grade. They call them so aesthetically speaking, they are not uh, mint, but you can always strip them. You can even sand blast them, you know, if you want to, you know, and then repaint them or you know, scrap, you know, take a piece of. <laughs> it's an AK magazine. Yeah. Right? It's as long as the spring works, as long as the spring works, you know, it's that's all you need. And the follower, of right, course. Right. But you know, uh, one I won't put my money on is Promag. They make decent pistol magazines, but rifle magazines so far, SKS magazine, horrible, awful. Uh, the AK, uh, don't even mention it. The, the 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 74 magazine, the spring is all like. Yeah. Yeah, I found yeah. that Pro Mag it doesn't take making magazines seriously, so. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we've always had problems with any pro mag magazine thing that we've dealt with. They've even tried to make an AR magazine that was that was nope. didn't really work too good. So yeah. I'm kind of um, I'm, I'm kind of stuck on old school steel mags. I mean, yeah, uh, that's probably the better thing. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. it's yeah, kind yeah. of otherwise. Sorry, go ahead. Even even the go ones ahead. that aren't even the ones that aren't pretty, as long as they're not bent up and the, and everything's working right, you can't beat them. So. Yeah, these two, you got the tap of course. This one, if you like enough, seven ninety nine. Is, is that one steel reinforced? Uh, Tapco, I don't think so. But to me, I mean, got people that use them like no problem. This one is the one with the with the. I think that's the one with the steel. Uh, at least they use some of them are. And those are the um, the Bulgarian cheapo one they sell on. You know, yeah. sometimes even Circle Ten has them. I mean, they range magazine. You know, they look like the. You know, cheap fake light. I call them. You know, yeah. They're imported over here, which is the important part. You know, here, right? You know, what I and found worked fine. Yeah, what I used to find with the Tapco mags, the first gen ones, was they were they were on some of these AKs where they opened up the mag well, they wouldn't fit in. Um, and that could have been the mag yeah. well, or it could have been. Well, a, so and and here, go ahead, Walter. Finish that. So, yeah, Sorry. so when you put the mag in the first time, you kind of shaved off some plastic to get it into the. Yeah. Into, yeah. the, into the mag well. Yeah. That's called uh, breaking it in. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what the thing is? Uh, one of the things I don't like about TAPCO, TAPCO is part of the Freedom Group. So and they used to be... Oh, well, no, they so used to be... The, they used, we, they don't, we don't like the Freedom Group here. They used to be the good old boy place, but not anymore. So um. I'm Too late now, I bought too many, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm not hating on you, man. You're my friend and everything, yeah. but let's just okay. So here's a here's a statement um, from um, uh, the Tyvon show. He says, uh, "AR folks love their ARs more than AK guys. AR AR guys personalize their guns way more than AK guys. It's a love relationship." And so he said, "Yeah, like painting, a gra engraving, etc." Oh. So he wants to know, like, it, you know, he says he thinks that AR guys personalize more. Um, you know, ARs are like grown up Legos for big boys. What do you guys think about that? Is that true that <laughs> AR guys personalize more than AK guys? No, no, no. I don't think so. yeah, Depending. I don't really think so because I mean, you can see from El Tenda, he's personalized the crap out of those. You can spend just as much money, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, so oh, yeah. Yeah, I think nowadays there's just so many different options. Uh, yeah. So many people doing options. Uh, so many different companies that can do things. I know we were talking about American companies, um, and now you've got like Kalishnikov U.S. and uh, you've got a whole bunch of different things going on here in America. I think in the next few years, you're going to probably see a lot better options coming out for AKs. And I, I'm waiting on that nine millimeter from Kalishnikov USA. Yeah, that was yeah. The nine millimeter looks kind of sexy. Yeah, because that's that's the real McCoy, not one of these half baked yeah. put together. Parts guns, so yeah, I'm yeah. the real thing, yeah. But you know, it's a matter of I think there is actually more stuff going on on the AK market than the AR market. Most of the AR stuff nowadays, uh, now the big, big thing, the big two thing, I think, and again, I'm not a, don't, I don't, I'm not an expert. It's uh, make it California compliant, so everyone is start making California compliant parts. You know, like it's a big thing going on, right? You know, 
which is sad, unfortunately. Yeah, I think AR people are kind of burnt out right now, right? Because so they made yeah. they made people made too so many ARs, so many AR mm -hmm. accessories and all There's that stuff so cheap. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we're burnt out, and I think when it comes to um, to ARs now, everyone's building. Like I was in Big Daddy Guns today, and um, there were they told me there was a lot of people coming in today buying lowers. So I didn't see anything going on in the news. I don't know <laughs> why, but they were yeah. like, yeah, all of a sudden everyone's buying lowers, and I think really the reason is that people just like I'm just gonna build my AR. It's really easy, and I mean, so it's just building them from the ground up. I just saw today, I mean, uh, this is just a run-of-the-mill 7.62-39 AR-15 upper, plain old M4-style handguard um, oh, okay. for 229 A complete 229 Yeah. Wow. With, so, yeah, well. You know, and you can throw a $39 lower on it, and you've got an AR-15 for less than. Yeah. So, yeah. so you know, you can you can build up your own AK, but we don't see as many people it's doing it. It's not as easy. It's not yeah. as easy. It's, you know. Yeah, but when you do start seeing a lot of guys building up their own AKs, then that's a signal. <laughs> they, they, part of the AK and AR is like the guy, if I can say that, and I'm probably, somebody's going to hate me. It's like the guy that buy the Ford Kia, whatever, the Ford uh, Fusion. Yeah. Because you can change the oil by yourself, do other stuff. The AK guys, they won there as a 1968 Mustang. So at that point, or 1957 Buick, at that point, when you start changing parts, it's another story. You know what I mean? I mean, it required more. Maybe it wasn't exactly a good metaphor. But yeah, that's well, not a good it, metaphor. It, it, it just requires. It, it requires more tools. It requires more. <laughs> there you go. That's what I was trying to say. It requires more practice to get it right. You know, um, you used to have the build with parts. an AK. You're saying with yeah, with an, an AK, AK. With an AK, with yeah. An AK, you yeah. can buy. You can buy a Marine Corps manual and a set of parts and put together an AR-15. Yeah, you can break you can break an AR, you can break certain things on an AR assembling it, but it's but you, you really it's not I, I've never done it. Fifty dollars and, and I yeah, I'm terrible, but I've never done it. So a, a barrel wrench and a, a proper vice for the grab the receiver or the upper, and you're building ARs. Sorry. Punches, maybe. Yeah, some punches. punches. Yeah. See so if it helps to have the right punches too. But I mean, even I mean, if you don't have the right ones, you can go to you can go to the harbor freight and buy the punches and stuff and start I mean, building. Just a matter of how much, how much, um, sorry, how many you're going to build. You know, I build mine because I'm lucky enough I work for a company, so I build mine in my spare time, you know, my free time. So we got plenty of tools. But honestly, there's nothing much you can really fuck up. I mean, if you can use, excuse me, my Frenchism. I mean, uh, but, you know, there's nothing really you can screw up in, a, in, a, in an AR in order to doesn't, you know, that no, rifle. Not really. I mean, if you, yeah, don't, if, uh, if, it, it if you don't torque the barrel tight enough, it's not going to, and, and unless it's like flopping, it's not going to explode. You know, it's the gas tube is if it's completely crook, you know, might be an issue. Again, maybe right, right. if you don't put the buffer retainer, you know, the buffer retainer, you know, to you know, at the right depth, the buffer tube, excuse me. Right. And you know, if you put the spring of the trigger the wrong way, you know, it might be a problem. Oh yeah, I, I've seen that <laughs> with fifty cal. Yeah, I mean, I had a mistake some time at the beginning too, as a beginner. But I saw also happening on all the big brand company rifles, which is actually scary um but you know uh you gotta learn a little skills you know put a little bit of grease you know when you put a barrel and the upper you know you know it's I mean, the, stuff. The, first, the first time i built an ar i bought a marine corps manual and i just read it and looked at it and started building yeah you know, well you're nothing wrong with, with new spec stuff you know it's like when rule number one no matter what you're building and whatever anytime you're using the screws Remember what Mark Krebs says once in one of these videos says, put the fucking Loctite. You got a Loctite. Actually, he says, sorry, you got a Loctite. You got a Loctite. <laughs> is, that what, is that how Mark said it? <laughs> sorry, he says, no, sorry, he says, sorry, my bad. He says, Loctite, you got to Loctite that shit up. Because, you know, <laughs> okay. because the people don't put any, any Loctite, which is debatable if you need, you don't need, there's two different schools, you know. Why AK doesn't. So, yeah, you got one screw, maybe two. You know, you know but then, that's but it. then, when you pimp your AK, you put an anger or something like that. People don't put an anger. Oh, yeah, my, my anger is getting loose. I'm like, did you put any work on that? I'm like, no. Uh, the glue, you mean? Like, no. The glue. <laughs> the glue. The, the, glue, oh, the yeah. red one. Yeah, I think what happens sometimes is you're putting it together and you're like, yeah, I'm going to come back and lock tight that. Let me, let me get these yeah. parts together. And then you never come back. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because once you've got it together and then you get excited and you go out and you shoot it, you're like, you forget. Until some stuff starts falling off. <laughs> yeah, a friend of mine was shooting a rifle. I saw the scope flying out of the gun. I'm like, what the? F 
I'm like, you know what, bro? I like that. I'm like, I mean, the glue? I'm like, no, the dude. Glue. The glue. <laughs> the glue. Yeah. Well, yeah. Listen, it's a, it's sometimes it's I think I think we have license to get a little rough and rugged sometimes, right? <laughs> well, you know, you learn your lesson. You know, I see I see people like. Yeah. I mean, I saw Angards barrel nuts barely barely talking. You know, because they don't they 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 couldn't align. You know, the old school barrel nut, the two parts. Okay, the two pieces. They yeah. couldn't align oh. the barrel nuts. In order to align, they went back <laughs> once. So now, yes, you straight. Oh, I saw a guy once actually brought in a rifle. That's a funny fact. You know, I got a problem. I can't put the gas tube on my rifle. I'm like, what do you mean? But looking through it, it took a drill bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, between the two tooths, tooth, sorry, and you went through and a drill in, you know, in order to put a gas tube, you drill him in the middle of it. I'm like, what the? Fuck? No. <laughs> I swear to God, that's happened for you. And I'm like, uh -huh. you know, you gotta torque that thing. You know, my 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 wrench wouldn't won't work. You do, you gotta use a torque wrench. You know, because yeah, put whatever, sixty depend on the company, sixty, forty, forty-five yeah, depend. Okay. You know what it, what you're using. You no, know, but you know, end tight is it's a big word. People trust a lot on the, on the, on the meaning of end tight. You know, end tight is, is a, can be can be can be you screwing up the, the you know the threads can be you making to lose. You know, it's it's a. Right, right. Come yeah, on. how powerful is your hands? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. What kind of what kind of you know, yeah, yeah. Well, I know I know where the better not is now. Now when I install our end guns, I already know that I can pretty much end torque, and then I give it a final, you know, with a, with a torque range because now I know exactly what point on my hands is actually, you know, right, right. After right. you build, sir, get familiar, you know. But then if so, it's a new so so if you're building an AK, mm -hmm. what kind of tools? I mean, just roughly. I know you guys. You did say that it's a bunch of tools. What's the basic things you need if you decide that you're going to make your own AK? Um, I think it's really difficult if you're going to fold up the uh, receiver yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. But what tools would you need? You go first. You might build one. I know a few of them. You might know better. I mean, uh. no. Well, I mean, you need you need the you need a press of some sort, yeah. or 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 the or the people yeah, use the. the to, yeah, yeah, right, 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 and that's that's shaped for the rivet heads. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Okay, if you're using a press, then you're gonna need the the, the press parts for the rivet to squeeze it in. Um, drill press, if, maybe. If you're drill if you're doing it, yeah, if you're doing the barrel, putting barrels in and stuff like that, you're gonna have uh, pieces and parts to hold that to press it properly mm -hmm. and not bend the barrel. By the way, um, which I've seen happen. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's a little it's a lot more involved. It's you know, mm -hmm. versus just putting right. things together and screwing it and pinning well, it. Well, you know, the weird, the weird thing is, you know, there's videos out there where these guys supposedly built AKs from shovels and stuff like that. Have you guys seen any of that? Well, they used the shovel. They, they used the shovel for the stock. They didn't build. Did yeah. they build the receiver from the shovel? I don't think so. Oh, okay. yeah. you know, but, but people make it seem so easy. They're like, oh, they putting together an AK. You can do this in a cave with candlelight. Uh, well, you know, even the people in uh, what do they call it in uh, Pakistan. The, Pakistan, I was thinking what's the name of the valley in Pakistan. Oh, um, they, they, yeah. they 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 do everything by, by hand, but they have they have some kind of tools, you know. But the difference is those guys know what they are doing, which yeah. make uh rebel sapper says you need uh go no go gauges. Well for head spacing, yeah, for barrels, yes, yes. Yeah, that's important too. You know, because are those expensive or are those like piece. relatively 80 a piece? 80 a piece? Again, oh, yeah. it depends where you get them, yeah. I mean I think uh, if you go again, I don't want to mention the name again, but if you go look up this guy, like I told you before, Ziki Shots, a bunch of build videos, and, and he's explaining what's the tool you're going to need, what you got to avoid, right. and, and which is interesting. You know, it's, I actually did a, I mean, it, I would love to take a class. The only problem is if I want to build another AK, I will, you know, make an, I mean, you can probably buy, I don't want to say. Uh, so, you, so Ziki Stout has a AK class? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, you can learn from him. I would like to take a class from. You know, mm -hmm. what I'm what I was trying to say is, yeah. I want a class from Jim or. Yeah, I know Jim Fuller has a class at Rifle Dynamics. Yeah, I don't know yeah. anyone else that has AK class. Uh, no, uh, hold on. Doesn't um. Oh, what's the name of that guy? Um, that was a. Uh, oh man, what's the name of this guy that um. There's a guy that does a lot of badass AK videos. Man, he's got the the slow motion camera. 
I'm trying to remember his name right now. He's done a lot of stuff on a on AKs and uh, hold on. You guys go look because I know there's another guy that has an AK class. Let me see something. Here. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, I know I that know. there's a bunch of companies that build them. I know there is Dead Good Society. Dead Goose Society. There are guys that build AKs and they're actually pretty good. I mean, more like a little company, you know, like a shop, little shop. They make okay. good AKs. Um, I mean, a class is not a big deal. I mean, you don't need a lot of tools, but the problem is you, you, you know, you depend, you depend who's, who's doing the class if you wanna, you know. Yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, Jim invited me, I don't know, many times. Again, the same story with, you know, but, you know, it's it's not even expensive, per se, because you go you go home with a rifle. Uh, the other one was doing a cake, a building class was actually... Uh, uh, Vickers, I think Larry Vickers has, yeah, doesn't he have an AK class? class? The class was the training weakers and the building class was with Vince. Uh, what's the name? The guy used to work with uh, Vince Knuckle. No, what's the name? What's the, I don't know you spell the name, but Vince. Yeah. If someone knows who that is, but so so that you said that that Vickers does the uh, training. He does the training, but he doesn't do the building. So someone else does the yeah, actual building yeah. class. Okay. Oh, uh, and the name of the night, the guy's Vince. I don't want to misspell the name because my English is poor, but it's Vince Knuckles, like Knuckles, like your your your, your, your fist knuckles. You oh, know what Vince I mean? Knuckles. Oh, that's the guy used to be on um on um oh, well, yeah, those guys. on Red Jacket. Yeah, Red Jacket. Yeah, Vince. Oh, yeah. oh, Vince. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I'm almost positive. I'm wrong. Please correct me, but I think that's who yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. And very knowledgeable and, and really nice guys and I they offered me to go to the class because one of my friends canceled it but again you know it's it's, uh, it's I don't know I, I told Jim too once you know no offense Jim but you know I gotta take a day off you gotta fly it's expensive too you know I love to take one you know again you know uh, and they like 1200 yeah, bucks it's, or Vince, something? it's Vince buckles Vince buckles uh, that's from Jackson Oldman and uh, Kyber762 says he works for Mesa Kinetic Research now, Vince. Okay, okay. He works for Mesa Kinetic. But, yeah, he's a cool dude. I've met him a couple times. He's a nice guy. Okay, okay maybe it's not the one I'm thinking of then. No, no he, was, he, was from, he was from that show. Most okay. of the people on that show were cool except for <laughs> – Well, yeah, the one – Yeah. Huh? yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Who shall not be named. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to give him any airtime. Yeah, um, so – all right, listen, we've been doing this for a while. I think, you know, obviously there's a crap ton of stuff we could talk about with AKs, right, guys? Oh, so yeah. So yeah. what we should do is probably come back and have another part of this. Maybe people can hit us up on this video with stuff that we didn't cover or things that they want to see. You know, mm -hmm. I'll give you guys a couple of minutes. Um, Walter, if you want to show some stuff or talk about some things before um, we go, hit us up. Yeah, when I, was, when I was learning things years ago, I, I drew up um, – you know, for the do-it-yourself guys, like back when the assault weapons ban was still going, um, you know, things were sometimes a little scarce and far between, hard to get. I drew up flats to make your own AK receiver. So you, oh, basically cool. weld, you basically weld the whole thing together, and then you either use sheet metal trunnions, or I built a Galil flat, actually, too, and used Galil um, cut, emailed Galil parts, and we machined them down. I made trunnions out of them, and I made my own Galil back then. Mm. So... Um, it, it, it all depends on you know how bad you want something, you know. You can. I mean, you can make everything. You know, if you need. I mean, I mean I, people bend flats, and you know, it's not easy to bend the flat and get it right, and then weld in the the rails correctly so everything functions properly when you put it all together. So it takes a little bit of skill and practice, or having a friend who's done it a few times before. Oh yes, uh -huh. like think about the, the the Germans during World War II, the end of the war, they call it last ditch gun. They yeah. build a bunch of design. They were probably working for a couple of magazines, but we know what happened afterward. You know, it's they were improved. You know, improving yeah. whatever, whatever all the you know the Polish during the siege of uh, but, but right. Marsa also. You know, they, they were building their own little pistol, little thing. You know, and the funny part I found about the Germans and their last ditch guns, in the end they copied the Sten gun. Yeah, wow. pretty much. <laughs> wow, why didn't they? Why didn't they just do that from the beginning? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's the German thing. They can't. They can't lower themselves to the. Yeah, they were trying to build a better mousetrap, and then they were like, "We don't have time for this shit." <laughs> we <laughs> even, get our asses built, kicked right now. <laughs> even when they built their tanks, they were so anal retentive. They had to have everything perfect, and oh yeah, it didn't. It didn't do them any good, you know. So. One of the designers was Porsche. They give you an idea, whatever you know. But then they end up, you know, 
waiting two or three years before they uh, approve the SDGT, you know, the student yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, A lot of politics involved with that. Like, yeah. I don't want to say something wrong. Don't get me the wrong way, but they could have, I don't want to say they could have won the war. Oh, it would have been bad. They, they wouldn't be bad. Yeah. If they go weapons in 42, in Eastern Front, it would have be been a different story, probably. Yeah. Two to, Especially for SGG 44 and the, um, uh, the the uh, ME two six two the fighter, if they would have got off their ass and did that, yeah. Well, helped. yeah. Well, some of us, I don't know about <laughs> you guys, but some of us are thankful. <laughs> well, my my, my no, no, I'm <laughs> saying, I w I probably wouldn't be here. So um. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think. No, I mean uh, the problem with this is this one. The one there will be another episode probably. But yeah, the problem yeah. is most of the industries was actually what was behind. You know, when you create. The fascist pretty much is socialism back up by, by people with money, you know, industries, you know, right. clearly. So in Italy, for example, there was a big mafia. There was a funny fact, actually true, that it says they were building a new Mackie, Mackie airplane. They were like faster than Spitfire and everything. They have a really good engine. Okay. Uh, even German like them. So what they used to do, they, they have only 10 of them. Okay. Because they, they used to pay, Fiat used to pay somebody for still making the biplane, you know, the one with the double wing. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're obsolete in 1941 already. Yeah. So they used to take this 10 Mackie, fly them from one airport to the other one and repaint the number on the airplane because Mussolini was looking them from them far away. So he wouldn't know they were repainted. <laughs> they, yeah. we, how, have how that, we, have, we have hundreds of them. You know what I mean? Well, the tanks, you know, they got the 10 new tanks at the parade, but the rest of the unit have, you know, the older, you know, brain carrier style, you know, tanks, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's all a matter of yeah. technology. If uh, it's, if anyone out there that's listening wants to see a funny movie about, I know this is completely a little bit off subject, but yeah. if you want to see a good movie about Germans, like, a, you know, there's a movie called Iron Sky. You guys ever heard of that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Walter, you should check out that movie. It's really okay. funny. <laughs> oh, is it it's, like like comedic kind of thing? About yeah, it? it's uh, it's about. Um, it was actually a low budget movie. It was actually um, fan funded, but it's a pretty good movie. And it's basically about um, there's a there's a troop of Germans that went to the moon, to the dark side of the moon, uh, okay. after World War II, and they hid out there. And their plan was to come back to Earth. Like they were supposed to come back here after Hitler took over and all that, right, you know, right, right, right. and that stuff never happened. And so in the modern day, these uh, astronauts go up there and discover them, and it's a whole thing. I don't want to like uh, don't ruin you know, it for me. Don't ruin it for me, please. Yeah, but it's really good. I think you would enjoy it. It's very funny. Okay. And when you watch it, you're gonna call me. So people out there, <laughs> let me know about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, when you guys, uh, for anyone who hasn't seen Iron Sky, check that out. Uh, I think it's on Netflix and probably on Amazon. Yeah, but, I think um, yeah. Actually, in Amazon is a good series if you like technology, military technology. Is a, I don't really call the name. There's a series they go around restoring old tanks. You know. Oh yeah. Them. Um. Yeah. Is it not tank builders? I've seen that. That's actually a pretty yeah. good. Yeah. That's a pretty good show. There's some good shows on uh, building tanks, building airplanes. All that kind of good stuff. Okay, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, it's amazing how you know. Even in, I mean, some of the design are still using nowadays. You know, yeah. like oh, the yeah. Vespa. You know, the Vespa, the little scooter. You know, that where it come from, right? From, from yeah. the Piaggio airplane during yeah. World War II. The way that the airplane was actually landing, the suspension. So they they see in action the airplane going down and actually you know taking easy when it was landing. So they copy the design and start making it you know Vespa. Oh, so that's how the cool. Vespa. And Breta, yeah. one of the two. Yeah, and then there's a very cool there's a very cool um, this it's called the Piaggio. I think it's MP3. You ever seen that? Is this a gun or a, a no? A, it's a it's a scooter. We're talking about scooters. Walter. Okay. So oh, yeah. I, I, I I use that to bring up. It's a reverse trike. It's called the Piaggio <laughs> MP3, and it's like a scooter, but it has two wheels up front and one in the back, and and, and it okay. can lean. It leans, yeah. I yeah, it leans. Lean. Really cool. Yeah, I would love to get one of those. Yeah. <laughs> you can work on that. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, Walter. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about before we go? Hit us up. Oh, hey, I, I might have found a, a new barrel supplier, but that's for that's for another uh, another day um but um no we're just plugging along doing our thing um yeah. you know doing the facebook uh instagram thing like normal and uh like i said we're working on a new website and um just day to day man you know? working getting it done getting it making done, it gun, making them guns you know what i'm saying yeah making them 50s <laughs> crank yeah. them out 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, anybody who needs a 50, hit up Safety Harbor yeah. Firearms. Yeah, we could do that. Got one. one of these days. One of these days. Yeah. One yeah. of these days. Yeah. So, uh, El Tenda, what you got? Uh, nothing much. I mean, I got something cool that you can find at Walmart, actually. If you're safe, is you don't need to put some light in your safe, your crawl space, your where you keep your ammo and everything. $3, mm -hmm. magnetic. And, uh, I think there is also a hole for the screw. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Yeah, three you, could, you could even put that inside your car. Oh yeah, exactly. On your RV, if you, yeah. you could, you know, if you're breaking something, and actually I use this one on my safe. You know, they're three three eighty nine, so really useful. And the other thing, I think Sunday I will put up my one thousand. Well, actually, it's over one thousand three hundred. Well, anyway, my one thousand three hundred subscribers, and there's gonna be two main prices. Wow. One is the AR. Another one is in AK, of course. Oh, uh, and Saturday, I'm crossing my finger. I should have an interview with Mark Krebs finally. Oh, cool. an interesting interview, different interview. Okay, very cool. I mean, instead of the stupid, you know, stupid, no, no, stupid, don't get me wrong, not my question. You hear, we're gonna, we're gonna like gun, uh, gun lover questions, you know what I mean? So, I think you're gonna find it, um, interesting. And other than that, yeah. That's it. So when you put that you when you put that Krebs interview up, please tag both Walter and myself and we'll share it and stuff yeah, like I'm that. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean it's gonna be something something different and normal. I'm gonna ask him, you know, some stuff that you you know. I, I never heard anybody ask him, you know. Because normally what you ask him, you know, what's a company, blah blah blah, what's new I I wanna do something like if you are having a beer or two, you know, and we you know, come up with a question, you know, nothing, you know, of course, obscene or anything. Other than that, I mean Okay. Always toys. Up, but. Uh, yeah, I missed all that about your toys, man. You, how? Yeah. yeah. You, how did you got get a lot of toys? We yeah. actually, we. I don't know if you know this, El Tenda, but we put up a snippet video of the video. So if folks are watching or listening. El Tenda, had, there's a whole show with me and El Tenda just talking. You know, for a couple of hours, it's pretty good stuff. And I put up a snippet of it today. I think uh, we had uh, Identilock or something like that, but. Um, you know, El Tenda also had some really cool toys. We talked about a lot of stuff. He showed more AKs. Just go, go ahead and throw up some toys real quick, man. Uh, what you got? Throw, where's the Skeletor? Throw up the Skeletor. Skeletor. Oh, yeah. Which Skeletor. One? I got like, there is like 30 or 40. Hold it still. Hold it still. There we go. Look at that. Skeletor's galore. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, miss, I guess I missed it. I'll have to go back and look at it. But there's that many variations of the stuff? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I mean. Technically speak, well, I mean the series, not not per se. I think there was like uh, but the toys themselves. But then you you can go through. I'm a good friend with a collector from Argentina, Mexico, Venezuela, oh, okay. Brazil, Italy, uh, French. Uh, there is a long story. You know, Spain they use uh, molding from French because they got a deal. I mean, it's a long. I mean, long history. You know, a, um, a lot of, a lot of variations. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a, a big of a collector. I buy them pretty much. Uh, one piece for each item except for skeletal which i buy even lose one i build an army of them but uh well you know it's uh you know it's, it's it's an interesting thing you know it's an excuse for for something different you know you can yeah. always you know i i i i build gun for living when i go home i don't want to see any any gun you know i mean it's understandable i think yeah. i think yeah. especially yeah. ours I don't want to see an AR during my weekend either. You know, I got three or four of them. My, my wife asked me, why you never shoot your AR? I'm like, trust me, I see them five days a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you need to shake it up, man. We all need to shake yeah, it up. You get jaded with stuff, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you need a little bit of freshness. Unfortunately, you know, we can't uh, legally and, um, you know, in any other ways get away with doing that with the wives. <laughs> so oh, you, might as well, you might as well, like, you know, have some have some other distractions, right? There you go. Yeah. There Cars, you go. Yeah. toys, whatever it is, you know, different kinds of guns. Yeah. You can collect horrible guns or stuff like that. Okay, so here's these guys Hopefully. throwing up Hopefully. their guns. Everybody's throwing up their guns. Um, I, I, you know, I don't have, I, I have a gun right here, but it's in the bag. This is a pretty cool bag that I, that I've uh, been taking a look at from Paccor. This actually like goes behind the seat of your car. You nice. Can, uh, attach this to the seat and keep a gun in there and everything. So I'll okay. throw that up. But you know, we've been going at this for a while. So I want to thank everyone that's been watching, commenting, asking the questions. Uh, if you've got more questions, leave it here. We'll come back and do another part to this. I want to thank everyone that sponsors my channel. That would be Safety Harbor Firearms, Walt, of course, uh, Rand CLP. They were here yesterday. You guys should check that out. Um, 
Andrew's Custom Leather, and Big Daddy Guns. That's how we do this. We're in the Big Daddy Guns studio. That's who gives us all this access. Big Daddy Guns, pretty cool dudes. And you can find a bunch of AKs over there. If you're in the Gainesville area, you can even call up. <laughs> Every now and then we got some Dracos, Dracos, whatever you call them. Yeah, in there. You get the Draco from Romania. Yeah. yeah, we got we got those. I need one too. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, I want to thank the folks that spot that sponsor us on Patreon, that support us on Patreon. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. So that's it. Thanks everyone for joining. Peace. Peace out.